us. And for you, thankful for Brother Austin and Sister Josie. They're a great blessing to our church. And uh, If you're looking for a church that's got a great youth pastor and wife and a youth program, uh, and you're not going to church or you're not happy where you're at, you come and visit us at Ten Mile Baptist Church. And uh, get get if you've got teenagers that you want to be sitting under the Word of God but on Sunday mornings and teaching and Sunday evening and teaching and youth choir and uh, we got all kind of activities for them and involvement and summer camps and stuff. And uh, Brother Austin, Sister Josie heads that up for us, and so. Uh, you listen tonight as he comes and brings the word of God for us, uh, and I pray it'll be a blessing to your heart. Brother Austin, come on. We'll be in the book of Joshua, chapter number three. Joshua, chapter number three. I pray that you're doing well. Uh, it's been a while since we've had the opportunity to meet and be together in a church service. And uh, just to be honest with you, I've been praying that the Lord would go ahead and allow us to come back together and, and uh, be able to be in church services together again. I'm looking forward to it personally. I miss the fellowship of, of God's people. And, uh, but in Joshua chapter number 3... I'm going to begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim, and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. Let's take a moment and pray uh, before we get started. Lord, we come before you today. Lord, we thank you for the abilities that you've given us, Lord, here at Ten Mile to be able to uh, bring these, these services, Lord, and, Lord, that we could put them on uh, social media, Lord, and that we could put them on YouTube and, and be able to share them, Lord, with literally the world. Father, I'm thankful uh, that we have that technology. No doubt, Lord, this is, uh, the, this is some of the uses that you had in mind when you allowed those things to, to be developed, and I'm thankful, Lord, that you've allowed us to be able to do this. Father, I pray that you'd bless everyone that, that hears this message, Father, uh, in full understanding, Lord, that... Uh, this, this, your word has the potential to, to reach many people. And Father, I'm asking, that Lord, the promise that you gave us in your word, that your word would not return void. Father, that you would honor that promise. Lord, that you would help us to understand some things uh, this evening, Lord, that will help us. God, that will give us grace and, and the ability to keep on going. We love you. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. Continue to protect. Continue to do as only you can, not only in 10 Mile, not only in the members of 10 Mile, but Father, uh, throughout this county, throughout this state, Father, throughout this country and throughout this world, I pray that you continue to work and that you continue to do uh, your blessed will. We love you. Thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here, uh, just for a few minutes, I want to look at the story of Joshua. Joshua has just become the leader of the children of Israel. He's not been the leader for very long. As a matter of fact, uh, just a couple of chapters back, you see that Moses was the leader of the children of Israel. If, if you want to look at it this way, he was the pastor over Israel. And, and Joshua just now gets, uh, gets this leadership. 
And he's still trying to follow the Lord, still trying to do the things that God wants him to do. He's trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God, as a pastor should be, uh, very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And notice in verse 1 that Joshua rose early. Now, I don't know what you believe about this, but I believe that Joshua's rising early so that he can get some connections to the Lord. I believe he's trying to get to the point uh, where he can get along with God and get some instruction and some wisdom. You want to know why I think that? You'll find that uh, God speaks to him in just a few verses. Uh, God's speaking to Joshua. And I think Joshua, what happened that morning, Joshua got up and asked God for for wisdom and understanding. Um, You and I need wisdom and understanding, especially in this day and age. We're facing things that we've never had to face before. We're facing things that that, uh, we've never... We've never really had to face. And, and God, I want you to understand something. God's not troubled. God's not confused. He's not trying to figure out what's going on. As a matter of fact, since the beginning of the world, He knew what was going to be going on in this day and age. He knew that there was going to be something called the coronavirus that was going to sweep through the world and cause mass chaos uh, throughout the world. And, and God understood uh, from the foundation of the world, listen, that, I know that's going to happen. And, and Joshua, I think, takes the time here to get, get hooked up to the right source, as Brother Tim has challenged us about. And notice what happens. The Bible says, and they removed from Shittim. Now, if you look at that word Shittim, you'll find uh, you can do a long, extensive study. I, I've studied the, the word Shittim, and I've gone through uh, the Scriptures looking at that word. And uh, that, that's a type of wood, but in this in this particular case, it is a city, the name of a city. And this, this, this means basically redemption. Shittim basically means uh, a new creation or something that's, that's become new. It's, it's, it's something that's been redeemed. And, and Shittim is symbolic of the beginning of Israel's journey. Now, a little bit of the history here, and I, I'm not going to take too long on this, but a little bit of the history here. You know that the children of Israel have come out of a place called Egypt not, uh, not too long ago. As a matter of fact, it's been probably about 50 years, uh, 45, 50 years since they've come out of that place uh, called uh, Egypt. They've come out uh, from among the Egyptians. And now they are at the River Jordan. And they are about to cross over and start their new journey in the Promised Land, that place called Canaan that God had promised to, to their father Abraham. And Moses had led them up to the river Jordan. Joshua's task now was to get them past Jordan. And I want you to understand something. They, they are starting a new journey. They're starting something new. Maybe you, maybe you are in, uh, your, in your Christian life. Maybe you just now started on this journey. And, and I, I've got some, some good news for you, but some bad news for you. Uh, the good news is that God's there too. But the bad news is that you're going to face some troubles and some trials and some difficulties. God's got that thing planned out already. And notice what happens when they leave from Shittim. They, they start out on their journey. And notice the next place they come to. And they came to Jordan. Jordan's a picture of trials. Jordan's a picture of trouble and, and, and issues. Listen, Jordan is not a river that you want to go uh, have a good time in. It's not something you want to go floating down River Jordan. Uh, it's not exactly... Uh, a fun place to be. As a matter of fact, it's dirty water. and it, It's filthy water. It, it, it's a place you don't, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time. The water is not still and quiet and flowing peacefully. Uh, the rivers of Jordan run quickly. The rivers of Jordan, uh, they, they, they sweep things down, down the current of that river. And, and it, it, it's a picture of a trouble and a trial. And listen to me, these past few weeks, you and I as God's children have faced a river Jordan. We've come to the point where we've got some difficulties, we've got some issues, we've got some things that we've had to face that I want you to understand we've never had to face before and may never have to face again. But God, I want you to understand something. God it was not troubled, just like He was not troubled in, the, in Joshua's time by the river Jordan. He's not, he's not troubled by the coronavirus. And listen, He's not troubled by the little things that are in your life. Listen, we... We, we want to make much of this coronavirus. But I, I'm telling you, there's more things going on in, in life than just this coronavirus. We've got, we've got issues of, of 
children and parents and spouse, uh, spousal issues and, and this and that and the other. I mean, uh, you look at the teenagers of today's age. Boy, they're, they're hooked up on drugs and alcohol and all kind of things. And listen, we got more than just this coronavirus to worry about, Brother Bert. We've got more, uh, we got more things uh, than just this virus we're facing. And listen, all those things represent a Jordan in our lives. Listen, uh, I want to give us a little bit of encouragement. Notice what it said. He, he and all the children of Israel and lodged there. Notice what this, this next phrase is. Before they passed over. Brother Tim, it says, they went, they came to the River Jordan, but their plan was never to stay at the River Jordan. Their plan was never to be stopped by their trouble. Their, their, their goal was never to stop and say, well, I've had enough of this Christian walk. I've had enough of these issues and trials and troubles of life. I'm just going to throw the towel in. I've come up to my Jordan. I'm just ready to quit. I'm just ready to give up. That's not, what, that's not what Joshua tells the children of Israel. He said, listen, we're going to come up to Jordan, but I want you to understand something. We're passing over it. We're going to get through this thing. Verse 2, And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. They commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. If you stay at the ark of the covenant... And you look at, the, look at, since the Ark of the Covenant was created by God uh, and ordained by God in the wilderness, uh, Moses was instructed to build this Ark. And from that time, the Ark of the Covenant was a picture of the presence of God. And I want you to notice something. Joshua and, and the children of Israel are not without the presence of God when they reach River Jordan. Listen, it may seem... Like when we get to our Jordan, that, that, that the presence of God is not there. It may seem that God's nowhere near it. God's nowhere around it. God's not anywhere to be seen. He's not anywhere to be heard. But listen, God's still in the presence even when we come up to face Jordan. The Bible says, the covenant of the Lord went before. Notice what it says, your God. Of the Lord, your God. He said, I want you to understand something. It's not just some covenant I've made with myself. Joshua says it's not some covenant, it's not some promise that I'm making you. He says I want you to understand that this is the ark of the Lord your God. This is a promise God has made to us. And he says listen we're going to cross this river Jordan not only that, but notice with me, he says and the priest the Levites bearing it the priest, the priest here, these are the only people that God has ordained to carry this ark of the covenant. And listen to me, I want to look at these priests for just a second. These priests are a picture of the men of God. Listen to me. We've got a man of God here at Ten Mile Baptist Church, and I know there are men of God all over this country. I, know, I, I have the privilege to know quite a few of them, Brother Tim. And, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I know some men of God. And listen to me. They go before us bearing the Ark of the Covenant. Brother, Brother Bird, I, I, I'm convinced of this. I, I, know, I know preachers and men of God that can say, I may never have faced the coronavirus before. I may have never seen uh, this or that or the other in your life. But let me just take a few minutes and explain to you what God's brought me through. Let me just give you a few minutes and tell you about what, what God's doing in my life and what He's done through my life. And I'm thankful that we can look to the men of God that are carrying the Ark of the Covenant and they're going through and they're saying, listen, here is the presence of God. We're going to keep on going for the work of the Lord. Notice what, what the children of Israel, those that, that are going to represent the people of God. The children of Israel are a picture of God's children today. Notice what happens. Once the covenant of the Lord passes by and the priests go with it, then ye shall remove from your place. Then ye shall remove from your place. What is this a picture of? I believe this is a picture of faith from the children of God. They've, they've come out of their place. They're saying, listen, we're not going to dwell on this side of Jordan. We got a promise on the other side. We got a promise on the other side of Jordan. It's waiting for us. It's called Canaan land. And God's promised it for His children that will stay faithful, that will stay true to the Word of God, that will stay uh, true to the, the ways of God. Listen to me. God's promised... Everybody that's accepted Him as their Savior, 
a place called heaven. And that, that in one way is called is Canaan land. But I want you to understand, I think, I think throughout our lives there are Canaan lands that we come through. There are promises, there are steps in our Christian walk that God says, listen, you may have to pass through the River Jordan, but on the other side there's something better for you. On the other side, you may have to face a little bit of trouble and tribulation and trials and issues, but I've got something better on the other side of Jordan. And listen, on the other side of this coronavirus, or listen to me, on the other side of waiting for your parents to be saved, or waiting for your children to be saved, or waiting uh, for your spouse to be saved, or waiting uh, for this or that or the other to happen, listen, God says, I want you to understand something. Sure, it's hard while you have to face the River Jordan. It's hard when you've got tribulations and trials and issues. But I've got something better for you on the other side. What do we got to do? We got we to follow after the Ark of the Covenant. Notice this in verse 4. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it. Notice why. Why, why am I not supposed to go near unto it? Why? That ye may know the way by which ye must go. Notice what he says, for ye have not passed this way here too. We come to, to, to places in our life. We've come to, 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 to lows, new lows. We, you hear people say that all the time. This is a new low in my life. And listen, Christians reach new lows. We were never promised that everything's going to be roses and sunshine and, and fun in the Christian life. Listen, we have lows in the Christian life. We have troubles and tribulations. We've been, we've been, we, we go to places we've never been before. We have no idea. Listen to me, I'm, I, I'm directionally challenged. If I go to a place, there ain't nothing that can help me other than a GPS. I've got to be led. Listen, even if I've been there before, if I've only been there one or two times, you better not let me just run off in through there. I've got to be led. And listen, uh, I'd be in trouble if I tried to go and navigate some place I'd never been before. But you know what? God promises me in my spiritual walk, listen, just like that GPS will, uh, will lead me through. Listen, that GPS will fail me sometimes. But in my spiritual life, I've got somebody I know that's not going to fail me. I can follow after him. I can keep back. I can stand back and see what God's going to do. I can watch Him as He does His work, and I can follow after Him. Joshua said unto the people, verse 5, notice what happens here. Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. You know what our river Jordans often do for us? They help us to understand the importance of sanctification. Sanctification is, is, is being separate. The Bible still says, it's not popular preaching, the Bible still says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Listen, Christians struggle with that today. Christians struggle with sanctification, being that process of being changed into a new creature day by day by day, getting more and more like Jesus Christ. Sometimes it takes a Jordan. Sometimes it takes a trouble or tribulation to bring us into that place where we can finally sanctify ourselves. I'm hurrying, I know, I'm, I, I, wanna, I don't want to leave you here forever. Verse 6, Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. The Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Notice this, and thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Brother, Brother Austin, what are you trying to get us to understand? What, what, what is this passage of Scripture trying to say? Are you trying to say that when I'm facing the trouble, when I'm facing tribulations and, 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 and trials in my life, I'm supposed to just stand still in the middle of it? Yeah, you better believe. Stand still. You know, my fleshly temptation is uh, when I'm in troubles and tribulations and issues, my, my fleshly temptation is to say, God, get me out of this just as quick as you can. I don't want to stand still in Jordan. I don't want to keep on going through this. 
I don't want to keep on hurting. I don't want to keep on having troubles. I don't want to keep on having trials. Get me out of this thing just as quick as you can. And God sometimes says, listen, what you need to do is just stand still. I heard a message here just recently talking about that God can work. If we would just stand still, we could let God work. Sometimes, sometimes God does the most work when we're standing in the middle of Jordan. Sometimes, sometimes God can get our attention the best when we're standing in the middle of Jordan. Let me move on. Verse 9, Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know. <laughs> Hereby ye shall know. Notice the, the transition that's made here, that the living God. First it was the Lord your God. Now he's noticed as the living God. The living God. What, what, what does he say? The living God is among you, and that he will, without fail, drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. You know, I, I, I can't help but believe that God's letting the children of Israel walk through Jordan so that they can have faith when they reach Canaan land. And they've got to face some, some issues, they've got to face some battles, they've got to face some war. I can't help but believe that God's trying to teach the children of Israel, listen, when they're in the heat of the battle, when they're in the heat of the battle against those uh, that are against them, listen, God can go back in their memory and say, remember Jordan, remember when I brought you through, remember when you had never been there before. Remember when you had never crossed over that thing. Remember when you had never been that place before. And I, I brought you through it. I am the living God. And I can bring you through your troubles. Maybe they, maybe they get into a point, a group of, of Israelites get to a point where it seems like the battle's going to be lost. And God speaks to the inner, inner man of that, of that Israelite and says, Boy, you don't quit. You don't quit. Oh, boy, you don't quit. Brother Tim, I've thought about in times of my, I ain't been in ministry for very long, but I've thought about times in my ministry when, when things come up and, and the devil gets on one side and he says, boy, you just better quit. You're going to make a fool out of yourself. I'm going to defeat you. God's not going to get any glory out of your life. You just better well quit. It'd be just better for you to quit. Hey, and listen, God, God will come up and say, oh, don't quit. Remember the Jordan. Remember the Jordan. I'll share something with you. My, my father got saved just like last year. Prayed for that man for years. And listen, brother, this past year, God's encouraged me. Don't quit praying. Don't quit seeking God. Don't quit following after Him. There's too much to gain. There's too much God wants on the other side of Jordan. Hmm. Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. i got to get through. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, verse 11, of all the earth. Notice, there's another transition. First, he's the God of Israel. Second, he's, he's the living God. Huh. Notice what happens now. He's the God of all the earth. He's the Lord of all the earth. They're standing out in the middle of, of the Jordan, and God puts that... I, 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 I'll spoil the ending. God puts those that river, stands it up on two ends, and God says, look, I, huh. not only am I your God, not only... Am I the living God? But I've got power over all the earth. I've got power over Jordan. God says, I've got power over that thing you're facing. Listen, I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what, I don't know what, you, what you've got in front of you. I don't know what, what place you've come to in your life. But God says, listen, I've got power over that. I'm, I'm the Lord of all the earth. 
Notice what he's going to do. Not only do we see that he's the Lord of all the earth, but he's got a promise for the children of Israel. He says, I'm passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of man shall come to pass as soon as the souls of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord. The Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Brother Tim, I don't believe, I believe that, 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 that there, God said, listen, get you twelve men. Twelve men that no doubt are leadership over these tribes. I want you to, I want you to bring them up to Jordan. And I want you to get them close to Jordan. And I want you to see if they've got any power over Jordan. Listen, you and I too often get to the place where we try to trust in the power of men to take care of the Jordans we face. And God brought those men before Him, no doubt good men. No doubt good men. No doubt godly men. But they stood before Jordan powerless to do anything about it. And God says, listen, take those twelve men and I want, to, I want to see in those twelve men faith. Why? Because notice He doesn't say as soon as their toes touch the water. God said, I don't want them just dip their toe in. Listen, you and I today, we face, we face Jordan and God says, let's go through it. We'll dip our toe in and see how cold the water is. Well, God, I don't really want to go through that. Why don't we just turn around and go back to Egypt? Why don't we just go back to the world? Why don't we just go back to the things I was facing before? Boy, I know I would know I was in sin. I know I was in trouble back then. But boy, it wasn't as hard as Jordan back there. I, I know I was in sin, but boy, I didn't have to face nothing like Jordan in Egypt. He said, I want, I want their soles of their feet. The soles of their feet. More than half their foot was in the water at that point. Signifying that it didn't matter how cold the water was. It didn't matter how hard that water was passing by. Boy, they was going to step off in with God. Because they knew who went before them. I promise I'm burying. Verse 14. Came to pass when the people were removed from their tents. Notice, step of faith from the people of God. Removed from their tents to pass over Jordan. The priests bearing the ark of the covenant for the people. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. Boy, you telling me? Not only are they facing Jordan, which is a bad enough river uh, in the wintertime, but they're going to they pass over Jordan when it's the worst that it could be to pass. There wasn't no narrow places. There wasn't no finding the narrowest part of the river. There wasn't no narrow part of it. It's time to pass on through the worst part of the river Jordan. The waters, verse 16, the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam that is beside Zeratan and those that came down toward the sea of the plain even the salt sea failed were cut off and the people passed over right against Jericho right where God wanted them right where God was going to start them and the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Last point, I want to read the next few verses of chapter 4. It came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of the man. Command you them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones. And you shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared out of the children of Israel, out of every tribe of man. Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. Take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel that this may be a sign among you. Notice what happens. That when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them. Huh. Huh. 
that she shall answer them, the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of, our, of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to challenge you just one last time. When this coronavirus or when, when the, the issues of your life, listen, all of our issues eventually end. All the things we face eventually have an ending. They end, they end one way or the other. But listen to me, what, what the great opportunity is, is that the other side of that, of that tribulation, of the other side of that trial, if we went through and, and had faith in God, in the, presence, in the presence of God, we're able to cross over our trials. Sure, we went through the River Jordan. Sure, we faced the same fears and the same issues and the same troubles and the same trials. But you know what? We went through the trial with God. The other side of that trial, we can look back and say, there's 12 stones. What, what, did, you, what did God say? He said, listen, when your kids look at those 12 stones, they're going to say, Mama, Daddy, what's that about? What, what are those 12 stones sitting there for? Well, let me just tell you, son, I trusted in God. I trusted in God, and He brought me over joy. When coronavirus is over, are you going to be able to back, go back? When your kids hear about it in the history books, no doubt if we, if we live on this earth long enough, they'll write about the coronavirus in the history books. And listen, when they come home and they say, Mom and Daddy, what did you do about the coronavirus? Well, I, 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 you know, I was fearful. I sheltered in place and was so scared to death that I didn't want to do nothing and didn't, I, I didn't have no faith in God and didn't have no ability to do anything and I... I let fear overtake my faith. Boy, what, what kind of a tribute is that going to be? But boy, if we ride through this thing, letting the presence of God go before us, we follow after God, we, let, we follow after the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God, and we come over to the other side, we can have 12 stones. When our children come back and say, Mom and Daddy, what, what happened when, when that coronavirus hit? I just followed God. I've been telling you all your life, son, you just follow God. Here's 12 stones. Here's my proof, Brother Tim. It works. God is faithful. God is able. God will lead you and guide you and direct you if only you let Him. If only you let Him. Let's pray and Brother Tim will come up. Lord, we come before you today. We thank you for your many blessings and many things you've done for us. Father, I sure am thankful that you're a God, Lord, that will pass before your children. Lord, you don't leave us on this side by ourselves. You don't just save us and leave us to go through life. But Father, you save us, you indwell us, and Father, you lead us and guide us. And Lord, in the times of our trouble, in the times of our issues and our problems, God, you wrap, you wrap us up in your arms. God, you give us a peace that passes all understanding. God, you help us. God, I'm thankful for a God like that. Help us, Father, to be the children of God we need to be. Help us like the children of Israel did here facing Jordan. Father, just go ahead and step out in faith. Follow after you, knowing all the time that you're leading the way. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Austin. That was a blessing. I pray it'd be an encouragement to your heart. Let me remind you, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, be sure and like it and share it and all that stuff you know how to do. I don't know how to do it. They just tell me what to say. Amen. So be sure you do that. Share that with your friend. What a great encouragement for us to keep pressing on. I got good news for you. I got good news for you. The Lord dropped in the midst of your storm. Amen. He said he'd never leave us, never forsake us. If you're unsaved, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. The Lord loves you, and he wants to save you by his grace. Amen. God bless you till we see you next time.